I'm Pamela Portnoy. I'm Alexa Marie Anderson. And, and no one's okay. <laughs> Night. What did I make you watch? You made me watch Tootsie, which I honestly am ashamed I never saw before. Right? Honestly, when I suggested it, I was like, oh, she's going to have seen this. And when you said you didn't, I was like, perfect. I know. And you're not the first person that um, in the last month has suggested that I see that film. Oh, it's so nuts. Yeah. It's a classic from what I'm told. And it really felt like it when I was watching it. You know, when you watch those movies that you Mm -hmm. feel like classics? Yeah. Those are some of my favorite movies. I love classic movies. Yeah. Yeah. You like this one more than The Little Hours. (laughs) How can you tell? (laughs) I'm kidding. I really did like it. I really did like it. Honestly, I did. (laughs) But I think it, yeah, might be clear. I like Tootsie a little bit more. A little bit of a different genre. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's a diff- It's in a different planet. Yeah, different planet for sure. But that's great. <laughs> it I is love great. that. I love that. So Tootsie, uh, just give you a little synopsis really quick. Um, it is about Michael Dorsey, an unsuccessful actor. He disguises himself as a woman in order to get a role on a trashy hospital soap. Uh, woo, woo. Yeah. Uh, the director is Sidney Pollack. Um, Dustin Hoffman plays Michael Dorsey and Dorothy Michaels. Uh, Jessica Lange plays Julie. Terry Garr plays Sandy. Um, Dabney Coleman plays Ron. Charles Durning is Les. Bill Murray is Jeff. And Sidney Pollack plays George Fields, his agent, Michael Dorsey's agent. So cool that he acted in his own. Right? Movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's kind of neat. What did you think? I. I loved it. I really, really, I really did. Um, It was such a treat to, I didn't know Bill Murray was in this movie. I didn't really look up anything about the movie before I watched it. I did know the general premise because it is such a classic, um, Mm -hmm. but I had no idea Bill Murray was in it. And I was like, so happy to see him. Yeah. Uh, I absolutely love everything that he does. He's such a treat. It was, it was a really fun piece. It honestly gave me anxiety at some points because oh, no. it was really, um, they really kind of nailed it with the actor vibe. Yeah. It's also kind of what I love the about it. The successful <laughs> actors in class doing scenes together, putting up their own plays, like that, that whole vibe. It gave me so much anxiety. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but it was like accurate. And um, so we know now. Uh, long drawn out sex scenes give me anxiety and yeah. uh what would you describe that i guess like um, stress a cool reflection of my cool life back at me of of life. <laughs> a reflection of pam's life gives her anxiety <laughs> good to know we figured something out today um what else uh yeah no i love the beginning it's really like an homage to what we go through so i really love it yeah but I'm sorry. It's also like exhausting because uh, you and I have this conversation all the time that like, yes, we have an actor podcast, but sometimes we exhaust ourselves when we talk so much about acting. It's it's so many people. There's a quote somewhere out there about like, there's nothing more boring than actors talking about acting, which I just find hilarious, but it's such a big part of our lives and that's what we're passionate about. So here we are. (laughs) Um, but I really felt that I felt exhausted by them. I think, <laughs> sorry. I think I just love um, Dustin Hoffman's character, Michael Dorsey. I love his passion about it. Like I love his passion totally. for it. And I think I very relatable. With, yeah. It's so relatable. And I think I connect with that so much. So it kind of like really roused me up whenever I watch. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, yes. Yes. So yes. I don't know. To each his own, but I really felt too like the casting sessions where before he would even speak, mm-hmm. they'd be like, "You're not right for it." That drove me crazy. And yeah. also, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think that's ever happened to me before. Like where I walk in the room and they're already done. Um, but sometimes you get the vibe that that's what's happening. I, I feel like that's happened to me before, not in um, an acting audition, but in a dance audition. We're, I mean, I still got to dance, but it kind of felt like, oh, like, well, you know, when you get cut right away, usually it's because like, oh, you weren't the right type. Like they weren't even watching you. You can kind of tell when they're not even looking at you. You're like, should I just 
go. Right. You know? So So I guess it does happen less with like uh film and television, maybe because they you're submitted online and they see your picture and then they call you in. So maybe that's not as prevalent in film and television, but I can see it being a thing in, in theater. theater too. Like I've definitely gone into auditions and sang my entire song without them looking up from the table. It's amazing. Yikes. It's my favorite pastime, you know? You know, not being seen, putting all your you know, not into even it, being and then at. just not even being looked at. That sucks. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So I, I really felt that in my bones. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's also, I mean, there's more to it than that. It's a very sweet film. It's a very it's sweet. It's very film. sweet. I really, there were so many things about it that made me cringe, um, but so many things that I really enjoyed about it. What made just, you, what else made you cringe? Oh, just like how women were treated. Oh. And that was, I understand, like the general. Yeah what the that was generally what the film's theme was is Mm -hmm. how men and women are treated differently yeah so it just made me cringe a lot yeah and i honestly felt bad for his um his not the love interest but the his lady friend that it kept letting uh leading on because i actually really liked her i i like a little cuckoo but i (laughs) i I kind of related with her i was like i think i might (laughs) i was like that would be all been her at some point (laughs) yes for sure yeah I feel like every actor goes through that stage, like where she was in her acting career of the just like insecurity of of everything and yeah, overthinking like, it. I'm moving home. <laughs> yeah, I'm moving home. I'm but like home. not only that, but like the whole like he kept leading her on, like setting up dates with her and then just like not showing up. That too. Yeah, that was how did she not like flip her lid? I don't know. I I would not be have, so kind. Have, I I if I were her girlfriend, like if I were a friend of hers, the advice I would have been giving her was stop giving him chances. He Run. sucks. Run far. Run away. Run away. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I agree. I completely agree. Yeah. Um, Dustin Hoffman's performance was incredible. Honestly, I had to do a double take because I knew that he was playing her Mm -hmm. uh, playing this woman character that he put on but it didn't even look like him like they did such a good job i know the transformation is really great and like his voice that he does and everything yeah yeah he was really great yeah it kind of is like reminiscent like (laughs) there are a couple parts in it just because of like the transformation that it like brings me back to like um Mrs. Doubtfire too, for some reason, like it kind of or like brings a, you forward to Mrs. Doubtfire. Forward, Mrs. Doubtfire was uh, made afterward, right? Oh, absolutely, yeah, it definitely was. I don't know when it was made, but it definitely, I think, was made after that film for sure. Do you but, follow uh, a boy with no job on Instagram? I don't think so. He, he runs like a. It's mostly like a meme account. He's fucking fabulous. He's um, he's actually one of the girls in the morning morning toasts. Uh, he's Claudia's husband and he runs boy with no job oh. and um he does a series of stories on his instagram uh in character as mrs doubtfire as he's like cooking dishes that's amazing it's really fun you need to check it out oh i do need to check it out because i love mrs yeah. doubtfire love that movie quoted yeah. all the time yeah it's good yeah um but back to the movie at hand yes uh Yes. Yeah, so and okay. So what did you, what did you like about it? What didn't make you cringe? I really thought it was fun. Um, I liked the love story, it, and I just like the general vibe. There's something about the '80s films, like the love story films. They feel lengthier. I know this was only that was still under two hours, but um, they feel. I feel like they take their time in letting the characters connect more in these films. Yeah, I appreciate it. They definitely take their time with it um, and let the... It's more realistic, I'd say, on how a relationship yeah. would develop than some of the movies. Some of the more modern movies are a little bit more rushed. So rushed. It's like mm-hmm. in the modern movies, a lot of the time, it's like they'll have the meet cute. Like the yeah. characters will will lock eyes and then cut to them being like full-blown in love. Yes, Yes, and absolutely. this is so not the case. Like you actually see them become good uh, really good friends. Yeah, it, it takes its time, and it has that '80s vibe. It's kind of like say anything, and like when Harry met Sally, mm-hmm. those movies take their time with the characters. And yeah, when Harry met Sally, that's a really good movie. 
I think love you, me some when Harry. I hadn't died. seen it, and then you made me watch it. You never told me you ended up watching it. I think we watched part of it together, and then I ended up finishing it. Okay. Yeah, because you were like, you need to watch this. Yes, okay. I did end up watching it. it was Maybe a, we should do a recap of that one. We could. We could. That's a great one. That is a great one. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, sorry, my slipper fell off my foot, and I'm trying to get it back. Hold on. It's fine. You've got quite the setup going here. Going well. Would you like to explain to our listeners how um, what your setup is here? I'm on the floor in the corner of my bedroom. It is like not that... It's it's interesting. My my laptop and my micro on a vanity stool. Yes. And I am sitting on the ground. Very good. And I am in my closet. <laughs> We're doing great. Literally in my linen closet. My my computer is perched on a shelf and I'm looking at like my sheets and towels. We're doing great. That. We're doing really good. You know, you got to do what you got to do for for the right sound. Not that we are giving you the right sound and we apologize. <laughs> Yeah, it's very unclear what this is going to sound like, but we hope we're just trying our best here. We hope it's great. I'd also like to like point out that Alexa left LA in such a kerfuffle that like we didn't even think about like the mic situation. <laughs> yeah. So she just received her um her mic in the mail that I sent her. Yes. We we're making do. We're making just moves. making things work. <laughs> what we can do right now. I mean, <laughs> That's what everyone's doing right now. Yeah. It's like, um, it, it's really kind of crazy thinking about it. I get like really, we'll talk about this on the RUK. I'll save it. I'll save it. Anyway, tell me why you chose this movie. <laughs> oh, because I watched it when I was young, young, a, a young, when you young, were a young girl, pup? young pup. And I just always it. wasn't it. censored? No. No. Is there a sex scene in this? You don't see the sex, but it's... Oh, it's, it my, it's my kind of sex scene. Yes. You don't see the sex. You don't see the sex, but it, but it happens. happens. Mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery. I'm like, why can't I see the sex? Was it good? Was it terrible? We don't know. It's a mystery. You get to make it up for yourself. <laughs> um, use your imagination. Um, and honestly, in this case, I honestly don't know if it was good or bad. Yeah, honestly, it could go either way. It could have gone either way. That's an intriguing thought. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure gonna, that that's what the now, filmmakers wanted us to <laughs> take away from this film. Was the sex good? I'm going to be up all night thinking about this. <laughs> How did that go for them? Um, <laughs> uh, something to ponder, anyways. Um, what was the question? Did you ask me something? Oh, why'd you choose this film? Oh, you why did I choose it? Oh, yeah, it's when I was young and I and I loved it. And I don't know, it's just one of those feel good films. I think it definitely, um, you know, aroused my passion for acting. Um, aroused, I feel like, is your word of the day. I know. I can't. Is stop it because now. we're talking about the sex scenes? Yeah, it just you got me rolling, <laughs> and now I just can't stop. So I'm just gonna keep keep with it. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I just always kind of loved it. It was very nostalgic for me, and I yeah. thought it would be a good quarantine watch. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think it definitely was. It was really fun. I didn't feel... Um, yeah, it flew by. It flew by. It was good. Yeah. It's a nice, lighthearted film. I said that's so... I enunciated that's so weird. Light Lighthearted. Lighthearted. We need lighthearted. It almost had an Irish accent to it. That could have been scary. Yeah, so I already know what I'm going to assign you for next time, so I'm very excited I about. I kind of know what I'm going to assign you, but I also feel like you already saw it, so I do have a backup. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, we're, we're gonna wait. Look, why don't we, we should just talk about it right now? What yeah. are you thinking is next? Okay, so either ugh, if you've seen both of these, I really am going to have to go back to the drawing board. But these are also classics. Again. <laughs> we, I mean. We could keep up the like one of us trying something new, or if we just have like a pa equal passion yeah. about it, we and don't mind watching it again. Yeah, I, the whole goal of this was to like take a load off, you know, yeah. not put pressure and just watch movies we like and to talk about why we like them so much. Okay, have you seen Thelma and Louise? Oh, that's no. what you're watching. That is 
That's horrific that I haven't seen it. Here's the thing. I can't tell if it was a movie that was assigned. I know she's dancing. Um, I, so I don't know if any of you out there know, I was a film major in school and there were so many classic films that were assigned. But the problem with my class schedule was the screening classes were always after lunch. And so I would always without fail fall asleep. Uh, while we were screening these films. So I don't, I feel like maybe that was a film that was assigned, but I totally fell asleep. It's really okay. I will forgive you and I will throw myself under the bus by saying this. I saw Ferris Bueller's Day Off three days ago. So I, I was thinking about assigning that to you, but I actually have something else to to make you watch oh, now, which okay. I don't know if you've seen it or not. Okay. But regardless, I think we should, we'll see how you feel about it. How do you feel? Have you seen Molly's Game? No. All right, that's what we're doing. Okay, Sorkin. All right, All right. I'm very excited. Oh, I'm gonna about love it. it then. It's it's so good. Hey, like no, I you. I think you will love it. I love that you're being sarcastic. No, I think you're really gonna enjoy it. No, I wasn't being sarcastic. I love Sorkin. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. You were like shaking your head while you were saying it. <laughs> oh yeah, mixed signals. That's what I always apparently give. So literally, because we're remotely recording. Yeah. Um, so that's our assignment. I'll watch Thelma and Louise. We'll both watch both films, obviously, because we need to yeah. recap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thelma and Louise and Molly's Game. I'm excited. Those will be our next two. Excellent. Very good. So, are you okay? No. No. She nodded when, for when are, like, that whole time. Yeah. I kind of... A lot of my time has been taken up with me thinking about when am I going to be okay I think a lot of people are in the same boat <laughs> yeah most it's people every weird like in the world it's a weird basically. time I think that true. we're all gonna be different after this I hate you know what I don't like I hate when people keep saying this is the new normal I don't think this particular thing is the new normal. Yeah. I think that there are going to be significant changes and that the way things were before are not going to be exact. Like, I think we'll go back to a semblance of what it used to be, but there will always be. um, Yeah. Again, I know nothing, but um, I think that like there will be a lot of things that change. I agree. What we I just have. I don't know. It gives me anxiety when people are like, "This is but our new normal," and I'm like, staying inside, not seeing people. That's not no. Yeah. It's a temporary new normal. Yeah, but it's still not normal. Yeah, no, it's going to be weird. I like. I think a huge part of me just wants everything to go back the way it was, but that's probably not going to happen. The case. Yeah. And, and who knows what it's going to look like. And I think everyone wants that. I don't think anyone's necessarily happy about what's going on. It's honestly awful. Well, um, it's, it's also very scary. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because I think like, you know, just I think back to how I was living life before and just like not like kind of taking for granted a lot of things. And it's kind mm-hmm. of made me sit and think like, oh, wow, like I miss doing all of those like little like minuscule things that I never even you know, noticed. And those are the things that I like miss the most, you know? Yeah. For me, it's, um, you know, even though I really like, like I like the alone time I've been getting, um, I do miss hugging people. Humans need to be touched. But I don't know if like, how am I going to, how am I going to behave? I was already like workshopping some ideas of like, am I going to have handkerchiefs like in the pockets of all my coats and in my purse? Like, so whenever I open a door, am I going to like use a handkerchief to open a door or, you know, am I going to, I mean, not that I didn't wash my hands before, but I feel like I'm going to like continue to wash them at like, at the rate I still am and I'll probably carry Purell with me all the time. And I mean, at least those little things I know are probably going to be a new thing for me. Um, But who knows like what actual, what the actual society will require us to do differently. Yeah. I don't know. We'll see. It is a weird feeling for sure. How are you? Are you okay? No. I'm not okay. Um, no one is. No one's okay. 
<laughs> but um, and it's okay. One not thing to I be noticed, it. it's okay. It's totally okay. <laughs> one thing I noticed, um, even though these two films that we picked to watch this week, um, were really fun, um, I still found it to be homework. I okay. finished watching one of the films literally like 10 minutes before we started recording. Amazing. <laughs> like, it was like pulling teeth for me to even do that because and it wasn't so much because the films were, because the films were fantastic. It wasn't because they were bad. It was because it was, I assigned something for myself to do instead of like going with the flow, which I've been, I've been thriving more on going with the flow and I've been really productive when I don't give myself anything to do because I naturally gravitate towards mm. doing things that are productive. But when I'm like, you must do this by this time, I was like, oh, no. Oh, yeah. No, I get that. It's interesting. So I, weird. I watched both of them right away. However, I've noticed, and it's like something that I think I've always kind of known, but I just have be become more self-aware of it being in quarantine, to be honest with you. When I have something that I need to get done, I cannot relax until it's done. Like yeah. I, my anxiety works like in the opposite direction where like I cannot relax or take a breath before I, f I get that done. It's very weird. So it's I just not try weird. To, I think you're normal. <laughs> so I just, try, <laughs> I just try to get it done. Obviously, you know, not try not to rush it. I think that's been like my thing that I have to balance, you know, not rushing to get things done, but getting them done in a timely manner. But I think I, the longer I wait, the more anxiety I have, which yes, we have talked about this before now that I'm saying it aloud, but, but even with like things that shouldn't be daunting, like watching a movie or, you know, like things I have tons of time to do, like even like a self tape that's not due until like the end of April. But I was like, no, I need to do it now because I will not relax for the next yeah. month. If I, I don't have do the same now. self tape. <laughs> Probably. I think everyone, every actress has the same self tape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's like a ton right now. The offices are doing something really, really magical, and that's awesome. And it's, it's great. So I'm embracing it, and that's another positive thing that's happening. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah. Break legs. Break all the legs. All the legs. Yes. Thanks so much for listening. Please don't forget to like, share, subscribe, all the things. If for some reason you want to see more of us, you can follow us on Instagram at no one's okay. And a special thanks to Jordan Ross Weinhold, Sean Moore, Jason Crow, Claire Palmer, Jackson Palmer, Tiffany Hamoff, Shane Rings, James Liddell, and our podcast is recorded at Soundwork Studios. We can't wait to meet you.